Oh, I've got tuna juice on me. Oh my gosh. Oi, I'm a cactus. It's like a coffin. <laughs> Hello everyone, hope you're well. Uh, welcome to another kitchen gadget testing video. If you have missed any of the other as you start this journey on this video, don't forget to have a marathon at the end of the video. Check out the rest on the playlist. This is like number 48, I'm guessing 48. I'm gonna go with 48, it's probably not. Yes, we have a mixture of gadgets today and as always before commenting down below, please consider that some of them can help people with disabilities and also other ones are just novelty and they're just like, <laughs> oh, that's funny. <sighs> They're actually a decent selection today. So, first up, need to boil lots of eggs rapidly, soft, medium, or hard? Ooh, there is a gadget for that. This is the egg boiler. I've had this so long, it was delivered to my old address, which I've ripped off uh, for your peace of mind. Six eggs in one go. Excellent. I think the water gets poured into from this. We then sit the eggs in, and then I don't know what that does. I generally don't know what that is for. There is no instructions for that. It doesn't look like I need it. <laughs> Ta -da! That is really, really flimsy. <laughs> We're gonna go for hard boiled egg, the most amount of water in there. I'm gonna fill that up. But I really don't feel comfortable going in here. Cause this is solid like electrical base bit there. So the water's going in, put our lid on, plug into a three pin wall socket and switch on to operate. The eggs are ready when the buzzer sounds and then the machine should be switched off immediately to prevent it from boiling dry. Brilliant, so it doesn't have an auto shut off feature. Okay, okay, okay. Oh yes, did you see the light come on? Brilliant. I wonder though, is that actually on? Do I have to press this? Oh, that's doing nothing. It's just, <laughs> it's just quite fun. Okay, so, <gasps> look, it's actually boiling. It's starting to steam and stuff. It's like an egg kettle. Let's leave that to one side and we'll focus on something else. Uh, this is just some water that I'm boiling for some potatoes in a minute. Meanwhile, need to drain off a tin of tuna. There's a, ah, yes, there is this is the tuna squeezer. Look at the packaging on that. I mean, it doesn't matter really amazingly if it works because you're just like, hey, it's a fish. I want it. Uh, easy to use, FDA approved, whatever that means. Uh, works with regular and family sized cans because if you have a, why am I so close? Uh, you have a family sized can, you're like, hey, it's a tuna party. We just need one big like LP thing record of tuna cannage. No, it's just the standard can we're using on this. Uh, never get smelly tuna juice. Wrong, sounds wrong. Uh, on your hands or clothes again, because that does happen, doesn't it? You're opening a can of tuna. Oh, I've got tuna juice on me. Oh my gosh, happened again. Three times this week and it's only Tuesday. Uh, perfect for people with arthritis and disabilities because you can see it's got that sort of elongated, is that right? I thought I was gonna say Elon Musk then. And this is, peace of mind, it's the original one because there's so many of these about. I actually bought the cheaper tins of tuna, so there's no ring pull on it. it. Tends to be the more expensive tins you buy, you get that on there anyway. But I've shown you on the playlist, if you haven't seen them already, lots of different tin opener options and even ways to get them off with a ring pull. Wow, smell that. You smell that? That is tuna juice. Hmm. Oh, I have actually got tuna juice on me. I just, I've got two cans, I'm doing another one off camera. And actually, whilst I'm here, I did just look out the corner of my eye and um, look. We've got a little bit of steamage going on this one. It's doing its thing. And also this is starting to steam a little bit as well. So we've got like three things going on at the moment. It's very crazy. Um, this could buzz at any minute. Wow, that's not working very well at all. I've got to get it. It should go much higher. Look, the screws for it to go into. Look at that's catching. We're actually playing with dangerous sharp metal here. This is not safe. That should be much higher. It should be like this. This lemon squeezer gadget, completely hinged like that so you can slot it in perfectly. In fact, we're reviewing its big brother in just a minute. Because of the angle there, can you rotate it in? Oh, that's, look at that, it's bending it. I've got a, okay, I've lifted it into place now. Into place, fish pun. That's all I've got right now. Squeeze it down, turn it out. Yes, yes and, I'm actually getting tuna juice on my hand. Oh gosh, I smell like a cat food. Urgh. This is not a great design. This could be massively improved. 
I mean, it's, it's okay, it does the job, but look, this, the tuna juice just sat there. You know, when you're trying to get it in, that's not a very much high angle there. With, you're using like exposed sharpened metal from the tin opener there, that's not too good. I've got tuna water. I really want to drink that. I said no one ever. I'm at this stage now where I actually have lost a little bit of track of time, but I don't feel... Oh, that red light's gone off. What the heck? Maybe it'll go, maybe it went off and it'll go back red or green. Maybe it'll go green in a bit. I mean, it's still, still in there. Going back to that lemon squeezer then, we touched on the fact that one of his relatives want to join us. Need a gadget that's going to squeeze a lemon with ease? There's a gadget for that. I mean, there's loads, but. This uh, by Joseph Joseph is the Helix Citrus Juicer. I actually have another one like this upstairs, which is actually a potato ricer, which we'll do in another video because it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> you can completely dismantle it. <laughs> uncle chonko. Uh -oh. uh, look, it's got grooves on it. It's got an actual thread on there that you line up, you get it in there. I'm sure I've done one like this before, like a smaller one for garlic or something by these guys. That's what they've done. They found a design that works and scaled up three or four times. Genius. You've got that real flexibility there. So the ease, the, all the work is going on here. And you're just like, yeah, like that. So let's try it with a lemon. Uh, we are going to just slice it in half. You put the lemon in like that. I really want a lemon slicer where you don't even need to halve the lemon. Is that even possible? That would be awesome. We then line this up. So get the grooves in. There's a little red dot there. Stick it in there. I can feel a little bit of tension there. A little bit of friction. We just, oh, wow. Oh, no, that's not too easy actually. You've got to really squeeze that last bit, but that's really fun. Ah. Oh, doing some reps, the citrus gym. Oh yeah. Your seeds are kept in there, which is perfect. And you've got a real proper squished garnish for a drink actually. That'll look pretty cool. Might use that in a minute. Spoiler. Like that. Oh, it's that first burst of juice that goes out. It goes flying. That's awesome. That's amazing. Oh, cheers. You guys got the lemons, right? Uh, just a reminder how the big brother works, or the younger brother. Ow! Uh, it's, it's a lot more manual and hinged. Again, you need the half and you just push it down and squeeze like that. So you've got, again, there's that flexibility, that bend there that helps you. Ugh. Actually, to be fair, that, that is tougher than that. So it could actually help people that can't really get that real good grip on there, but they both work and you both get left with these sort of like, I'll say it, nipple patches of lemon. Anyhow, if you thought one lemon gadget, no, two, a review of the old one as well, it was good for this video. <laughs> Let's triple whammy it. Need to do a watering can for lemon juice. There's a gadget for that. Okay, so this uh, by Peleg Design, actually they've come out of nowhere, these guys, they're doing some pretty cool stuff. I think they're doing the egg wins, like eggs in a penguin thing. Everyone's tagging me in that and I'm trying to get it from America. And I just heard a click. Hang on a sec. Oh, I did just hear a click. And there is steam coming off the top. The light has gone off. I'm going to turn it off at the wall. I'm just going to let it do its thing. Yes. So this is the lemon air. Uh, lemon air. I love that. It's sort of a French and exotic. Lemon air. Je suis bougé. Lemon air. That's it. <laughs> no instructions. It's just like, yep. Yeah, it's it's a watering can uh, for for your salad or whatever. So this is everything in the box. <laughs> it's just a watering can with a lemon juicer, old school retro one on top. But I do like, they've actually made a little bit of uh, quality design here. They've got the, the grooves that just slide in like that. So it can't move, a little bit of peace of mind. I may be asking too much to have a bit of a suction base on there so it doesn't move around, but hey, um, can I have a lemon? Thanks. Ah! Okay, so basically this is it. We're just gonna get the lemon on there. And this is like your old school juicer. I love that, but you can risk to get the whole lemon squirt in your eye kind of thing. But there's something nice about this because you can, you don't get that with those other gadgets where you kind of run the lemon against the grooves and it feels nice. And it catches the seeds and all the pulp and the flesh and all that stuff. Oh, baby. I forgot that I was recording then. Sorry, I was getting <laughs> I was really enjoying that. This is the sort of thing that you'll see in some sort of funky London restaurant where they cost like about 50 quid just for a soup. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, but I'd rather have lemon juice and lime juice on me than, um, than tuna juice. Out of context, that could sound really wrong. And I'm gonna pour our other lemon and lime juice in there as well. 
And this is the most uh, uh, exotic dish I can come up with right now, a, a tin of tuna. I actually had a tuna mayo sandwich yesterday with, uh, there you go, come out, oh no, it's coming out there, don't tip it too much. Yeah, <laughs> I love the lemon and lime combo with tuna, with a bit of mayo like that, a bit of pepper, that is a good sandwich. And now in the words of Monty Python for something completely different. Fed up with your ice cube tray and want ice cubes that are instantly reusable? There's a gadget for that. This is the cactus, reusable ice cubes. There's 20 in a pack, but there's not 20 there because earlier, I just dropped one on the floor. I uh, thought ahead of time and put them in the freezer. Basically, they're kind of bendy. There's a fluid in there, pretty much almost full. It's basically ice cubes that you, I thought these were really cool. If you stick them in the freezer, you want, hey, I need an ice cube and you just chuck it in. Yeah. And the light's gone off. We'll come back to you in a minute. There you go, tucked in with our frozen bread, we have got some of these cubes. Well, they're not even cubes, are they? Just frozen cactus. Hello. So let's go nice and old school on this. Remember, this is from one of the old original gadget videos with a Pac-Man glass. That was oh, ages ago. Make sure you check out the rest of the playlist, though. Have a, it's going to take hours to get through it. The colour is kind of semi-always on now. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, it's not about that, all right? Stop stealing the limelight, Pac-Man. Oh. I guess the real test is, they are cold actually, I wasn't thinking of that, they're, they're not, I mean I put them in five hours ago. I just want to see if you get that sort of sound, hang on. Uh, not so much, do you know what I mean, you get that sort of clinking sound when you use ice cubes, like, clunk, clunk. And this is just like plastic going, oi, I'm a cactus, get out of the way. That's not very nice, it tastes like tuna water, <laughs> I think I just got a bit on my hands so much, it's just everywhere. Okay, but it's really warm. But this with one, two, three, four, five cactus inside. Yeah, it's worked. It's hard to sort of show you visually, but that has actually cooled it right down. I feel like probably for best as you've left it overnight, like a real good solid like, chill on it, but that's good. Can you see that whole world of smoke coming off the pan of potatoes? I haven't burnt them folks. I've uh, just drained them off. It's time to mash them. Make smooth mash in seconds, so does a masher generally. Uh, scrapes the pot clean and serves. Does it serve? Does it really mash? Does it really scrape? Yes, but does it serve? I don't think so. Let's role play. Am I gonna be sat at my table? Hello, smooth. Serve me my potatoes. I ain't gonna work. Uh, that's, that's not true, but we will, we'll, Dream Farm normally do pretty good stuff. We'll, we'll live with that, all right? Just as an aside, if you are wondering what I do with my gadgets, I tend to put a lot of them, the ones I like, in my gadget drawer, but I'm starting to give them away on a certain level on Patreon. So if you're not supporting me on Patreon, there is a perk where, in fact, this one, you might remember the Fondoodler uh, cheese gun gadget the other day, which was a lot of fun. I am literally finding it right now. Enjoy. Big smiley face. Look at that. Every month or so, I'm actually giving away gadgets. In fact, the best one of this video, I'll do that too. So if you're not supporting on Patreon, please consider doing so, because it does help me uh, grow some of my dreams. <laughs> it helps me grow my dreams. But let's look at this. You can trap the potato. You can press it, and then you can mash it. That's, that's kind of what you, no, no, because it's grooved. Yes, it's like one of those door things. Remember them? It's like that. Oh, wow, look at that presentation. I love it. It's like, here I am. It's like a coffin. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> and this silicon edge on it must be the bit to scrape. So, we've got a bowl down there. Let's potato up. Boom. Look at that. It's literally pulverizing the potato. And you can't see because it's still hot. It's steaming up, but trust me. Now, what I did do on purpose is not peel the potato so I had skin on there. So the smooth, the potato there, that is so smooth. Look at that. And it's creating like almost like a rosebud effect. And we see the scraper thing on the side. So if I just scrape, is that working? Oh my gosh, look at that. It's getting the bowl clean. I'm just mashing now. I've got nothing else to say. That's really, really good. Although it doesn't serve it for you. And I'm getting facial right now. Uh, last gadget, which coincides with our eggs that have stopped boiling over there. In fact, should we check that? Should we check it? The steam has risen in there. There's a bit of condensation. Oh, oh look at the eggs. Yes. Excellent. And we can use this to lift it up, can we? Oh, what the heck is that? Has it burnt or something? Oh my gosh. Well, Mr. Internet Project, that was not much helpful when I researched it online. That's why there should be some decent instructions. And perhaps the ice tray, or the ashtray of egg was here. What was the role of this? I don't know. 
This is where you guys in the comments tell me it's completely obvious to me and then I look a fool. So I'm going to take an egg. Hi, ah, it's hot still. Look, look how big that is. <laughs> I love that. That's why I did that angle on purpose. You sort of have like this egg where it's like, hello, I'm, an, I'm a hot egg. Wow. Now I'm a big girl. So the reason we're cooling down the eggs, there is a gadget for that. Uh, deviled eggs. You want to make deviled eggs? You need hard boiled eggs. Hey, that rhymes because it's the same word. Uh, deviled egg maker by Jouet. Merci. A uh, devilishly clever way to make deviled eggs. Uh, all in French down there, French but English. So apparently you press the egg yolks into the mixing tube, uh, you prep with seasoning and stuff like that, and then you've got like a, a, basically a plunger for uh, filling the egg whites. But I was a bit gutted because I thought this actually, you put the whole egg in, the egg white as well, and miraculously somehow it gets the yolk out, which would of course, unless it halved it, would almost be impossible. So I'm sure these bits all have technical terms, but this is like a, a rod or a slight plasticky knife. This looks cool. This is the main vessel. So that's where it's going to come out of. Look at that. Ah, yes. Okay. So this is where we're going to push through the yolks. For yolks, we need the yolks from the eggs that were cooled down. So we still don't know if these are hard boiled, but they, they de oh yeah, they definitely are. <laughs> I love doing that. I'm just gonna halve the egg down the middle and boom, chicka wow wow, it is hard boiled. So I'm gonna take the yolk out. We leave that because that's where our recycled filling, it's kind of like you take all the filling out, you introduce it with loads of flavors and stuff, and then you put it straight back in. Now these yolks have been so overcooked, they've gone a little bit brown, look at that. I'll tell you what, I've had some amazing smells today. Tuna, and now the smell of egg, which is right up there, isn't it? With one of the nicest smells in the kitchen. So here's what you do. You take the mixing tube, they take off the end it's gonna come out of. You stick this tube on top. This is actually very cleverly done. You screw that on, okay? So it's got holes in there. Take uh, an egg yolk, or maybe two or three. Yes, yeah, pack it in there. So that's right in there in the top. And then we're going to take the stopper thing and hopefully, look, if I push down. Oh, look, <laughs> look at that. It's like Play-Doh. It's coming out like that. <laughs> I always wanted one of those as a kid because I like it. It's actually mincing it for us. And I was a gadget I was going to do today was a, uh, a meat mincer, but I'll show you that another time. But this is good. Wow, <laughs> it's really cool. So what I would normally add in mine, because I think we still need a bit of lubrication, is some mayonnaise, mustard powder, da -da 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 -da, some malt vinegar, just a little drop, a bit of salt and pepper. Anyhow, this is the scraper and we just kind of mix it all together in there. I think this is going to work really, really well. And I totally think I'm going to give this away because I don't like deviled eggs that much. I mean, they're nice, but some, some people absolutely love them. This is very clever indeed. So the, the, the lid now, we've made it upside down. That just screws on. So we've got our sort of teat end. We use that to literally just do it. So let's fill some eggs. Oh. Oh, oh look at that. Okay, I didn't mix it too good. Look, <laughs> it looks like toothpaste. I've gone for that sort of double icing look where you've got a mix of colors, you know? That's what I intended. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Look, you can get, that's awesome. I like that a lot. Forget the first one, that was where it was all jumbled up. I absolutely love this. I've got nothing bad to say about it, except it needs one more thing. Deviled eggs. They love paprika. <coughs> shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Oi! That can be my one. Oh, there we go. We're just like getting crazy now. Oh my gosh. Oh, I like, just destroyed that one. <laughs> But this one was nice, uh, and we destroyed that one as well. Brilliant. Don't forget to have a marathon now. Uh, the link is in the video and also in the description if you want to head back and watch for number one. Trust me, you are gonna need the popcorn. Uh, very excited, egg excited. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. I mean, as a side note, the egg cooker, I'm a bit worried about that. Why did it burn there? And what was the point of the tray? What was the point of this other than to put a seed and a bit of lemon flesh in it? I don't know. But thanks for watching so much. Do consider becoming a patron. And if you've seen any cool gadgets, do let me know down below uh, and send me a link on social media. Follow me on all those platforms as well for behind the scenes bits and bobs. And I'll see you again next time. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Mrs. Barry and I were once in America in a subway store and she spent about five minutes trying to tell the guy I want a tuna sub. And he's like, we don't do tuna. And it's like, tuna. Oh, you mean tuna? It took like five minutes. <laughs> like.
Yeah, I mean, guess you had to be there, really. Yeah, you did. No, 